There was a trap. The finale of Agatha All Along has finally dropped, and I'm sure you all want to know my thoughts on these last two episodes. So let's start with episode eight. Honestly, it didn't leave much of an impact. I mean, I can totally accept that Jennifer Kale just kind of dipped without saying goodbye. But then we get to episode nine, where we actually get to understand who Agatha really is, and we don't even need to judge her for it. When it comes to her feelings about Nicholas Scratch, it's clear she's got no guilt there. But let's be real, she's still rocking that villain vibe, just as her reputation suggests. And as I predicted, there was no Wanda, no Mephisto, absolutely nothing. I can't even imagine how disappointed some of you were, hoping for answers about Wanda Maximoff, only to come away with, like, well, nothing, zip. And as for Mephisto, Honestly, I'm surprised that some of you are still clinging to the idea of him showing up after everything that went down in WandaVision. Now, there were definitely some intriguing moments in these episodes, even if they didn't quite match our expectations. I guess we should keep in mind that classic advice, don't get your hopes too high. So instead of me just venting about it, let's chat about some important highlights from episodes eight and nine of Agatha All Along that might connect us to the upcoming spinoff. Oh, and before we dive deeper, happy Halloween, everyone. I'm super curious. What costumes did you choose this year? Drop your answers in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that button because we're going to keep exploring the exciting world of MCU films, superhero stories, and so much more. All right, let's get into it. First off, a huge shout out to all of you and to myself for correctly guessing that the Witch's Road was just a fake reality created by Billy. Whoa, seriously, you guys are sharp. Now let's dive into the real topic of this video. No Wanda, no Mephisto. Honestly, I've had a gut feeling from the very beginning that we wouldn't get any big revelations about these two characters in the finale. The big mystery of whether Wanda is still alive. It seems like Marvel has decided to keep that a secret for now, likely holding off until their upcoming projects. We know Marvel Studios is cooking up several things, including a spinoff from WandaVision and Agatha All Along that focuses on the search for Tommy. Plus, with Vision Quest also in the pipeline, the uncertainty surrounding Wanda's fate could really boost audience interest down the line. What's really disappointing though, is that we didn't get even a single hint about Wanda in this final episode. Even if it was just a misleading clue, it would have been something. It feels like all that hype about Wanda that was built up in episodes one, two, and even seven, just fizzled out without any payoff. Now, do you think just having Billy around and continuing the story about finding Tommy is enough to satisfy fans who are hungry for even a little information about Wanda? I really don't think so. Fans have been invested in Wanda's journey and her absence is definitely felt. As for Mephisto, I don't wanna dwell on him too much. I'm not one of those fans who has been desperately waiting for him to pop up. I'll admit it, yeah, even before he was name dropped in episode three, an agent of Mephisto. There were all sorts of hints about him scattered throughout the series, like Nicholas Scratch, who's connected to Jennifer Kale and is actually tied to the Ghost Riders, along with the origins of Billy and Tommy. So many clues pointed back to Mephisto, and it felt like we were on the brink of something big. But after what happened in WandaVision, I just can't make the same mistake again by hoping for Mephisto's appearance. It's a bit of a double-edged sword. While the speculation keeps things exciting, the letdown can be pretty tough. So, if you were expecting some incredible character to suddenly appear in these last two episodes, I'm afraid it's just not happening. It's like we were all geared up for a thrilling finale, and then nothing. Now, aside from those two characters, we did see death take center stage in episode eight. It was a significant moment after we uncovered the true identity of Rio Vidal. You know, initially, I was really hoping Marvel was finally bringing in a character I've been waiting for since 2012. Who wouldn't be curious about the lady behind Thanos' motivations? In the comics, death is portrayed as a powerful character, one who has the strength to rival half the universe. She's not just a minor player, she's a force to be reckoned with. But it seems like the MCU decided to create their own version of death, resembling Hermes from Greek mythology, guiding the dead to Hades. 
I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit disappointed, especially since she's supposed to be the original Green Witch, the strongest in the lore. Yet, in this series, she mainly stuck to her role of escorting the deceased. What did I hope to see from her? I was really hoping she'd take it upon herself to revive Alice and Lilia. As for Mrs. Hart, honestly, I couldn't care less about that. There were two scenarios I had in mind. First, she could potentially do it herself, considering that, as the Green Witch, she has the power to bring others back. Or second, I imagined her teaming up with Jen, since Jen is the High Priestess. I thought that would have been an amazing collaboration, but alas, that didn't pan out. Now, let's talk about Jen. She's the High Priestess who rose from the ground after regaining her powers. And then what happens? She just kind of disappears. I mean, you come back from that intense moment and you'd think there would be more for her to do, but instead, she just vanishes. It left me feeling a bit underwhelmed. Where was the grand return? Where was the epic moment we were hoping for? When it comes to expanding the story for the upcoming spin-offs, I have to give credit to Agatha all along. The series is incredibly clever. We got to witness snippets of Wanda's past. Her children, Agatha as her friend, Vision, and likely Tommy, who we expect to find soon, all coming together to rebuild Wanda's family. Isn't that what Wanda's mission was before she was declared dead at Wondagore? But I have to admit, I've been a bit troubled by my own thoughts after watching the scene between Billy and Agatha in episode seven. When Billy directly asked Agatha if Wanda was really dead, Agatha's reaction, this vague, maybe yes, maybe no, made me uneasy. It got me wondering about the dynamics happening behind the scenes at Marvel Studios regarding Elizabeth Olsen's character. On one hand, there's been a lot of buzz and even claims about Elizabeth Olsen returning as Wanda Maximoff. But what if that's not the case? What if she's actually been written off completely at Wondagore? Or even worse, what if we're going to be introduced to a new cast to play a completely different Scarlet Witch? That thought has me really worried. But let's put Wanda aside for now. It seems Marvel Studios wants us to focus on finding Tommy first, possibly setting the stage for the Young Avengers. On a brighter note, there are some amazing achievements that Marvel Studios nailed with Agatha all along. For starters, they told a fantastic story without relying heavily on CGI. Up until episode seven, everything felt authentic and satisfying. Secondly, we finally get to see Agatha as she's portrayed in the comics. She's become a ghost after reluctantly sacrificing herself to save Billy. This ghostly version of Agatha is an iconic image from the comics. She's not just a mentor to Wanda, she's also her friend and a key member of her coven, helping her navigate the witch's road. Now it looks like Agatha will be sticking around to mentor Billy in upcoming projects, just like she did for Wanda in the comics. It's a fascinating twist that adds depth to her character and keeps the storyline alive, connecting the past with the future. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that dynamic plays out. I'm also pretty excited about what Marvel might have in store for the character of Nicholas Scratch. It's not just about figuring out who his father really is, because let's be honest, Rio definitely isn't the one. What really intrigues me is what's happening with Nicholas right now and his role in the MCU. In episode nine, Agatha mentioned that she wasn't ready to meet Nicholas Scratch in the because afterlife. I can't face him. Whatever you wanna call that place. That's why she chose to become a ghost and stick around with Billy instead but why isn't she ready? I think we all know that in the MCU, Agatha and Nicholas shouldn't really be at odds with each other since there's no bad history between them. In fact, Agatha genuinely cares for Nicholas, and we see that pretty clearly in episode nine, right? It's really frustrating too, especially when Jennifer Kale casually spills the beans about Nicholas Scratch to everyone without considering the consequences. So why is Agatha afraid? It feels like Nicholas is more than just an ordinary figure in the afterlife. And this fear could be linked to Mephisto. The series hasn't revealed much about that connection, but I can't help but wonder if Marvel is planning to bring Nicholas, Mephisto, and possibly even the Ghost Riders into future projects in a bigger way. Just think about it. This could open up so many intriguing plot lines. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these characters will intertwine and what kind of conflicts might arise. There's so much potential here, and it could lead to some really exciting developments in the MCU. What do you all think? Are you as eager as I am to see how this plays out? So that's the wrap up on Agatha all along. 
Marvel has really set the stage for Billy and Agatha, and their story is just beginning as they go on a mission to find Tommy. Now that Tommy is alive in the body of a child, who, if we follow the comics, is actually Thomas Shepard, it's exciting to think about what's next. We can't say for sure which story will come first, but it's pretty clear that Vision will also be making a return in Wanda's ongoing journey. I really hope we get to see Wanda's story come together again. It would be amazing to see her take on a major role in Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. I'm planning to break down all the details from these two episodes in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. But enough about me, I want to hear what you think. Have you watched the final two episodes of Agatha all along? What are your thoughts? Drop your comments below so we can chat about it. Looking ahead, we'll keep digging into all the latest updates on upcoming MCU projects and discuss all the exciting stuff coming up in films and series. Don't worry, Cinema Moo is here for you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so we can keep this conversation going in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to catch up with you in the next one.